guys. Uh, welcome Jeff Hicks, Leah McDonald, Pat Stewart to the first ever Backstage at Capu Drummer Summit. Yeah. All right. I hope it's been fun for you guys to gather as great. drummer compadres. You look awesome on your kits. Typically it's one guest, but today very special show with three drummer guests. So we're gonna have a focus on drumming, of course. And I think we've had a lot of guitarists on our show. So it was time to yeah. have some kind of drum revenge. All right. I thought we'd catch up a little bit of talking about your journey to drumming. <clears throat> Why are you drummers? We can think about that. And then we're gonna go into a really fun game of drummer jeopardy. So <laughs> hope you guys have been brushing up on your drummer trivia. Is there cash know. prizes? There are prizes, that's all I will say <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Whoever wants to start, I just wanna uh, start off with why did you guys choose to go into percussion, to drumming of all, of all the instruments that there are? Hmm. Great answer, Jeff, thank you. Wait, <laughs> I'm not done. Oh! <laughs> Do I have to start? Go ahead. Uh, no. The year was 1972. <laughs> when you were born. <laughs> uh, grew up in Winnipeg. My dad was a drummer, and he had a drum kit that looked a bit like this. It was oh, uh, orange that. Ludwig marbled, I guess they call it that. And uh, I had no interest in them at, at first, but when you grow up around drums, you sort of, you're playing them and you're checking them out and breaking the heads and writing on them with crayons. <laughs> Eventually I just started playing them and uh, that was that. Like as a, as a really young person. Yeah, I was probably, you know, five, six, seven. I wasn't really playing a lot. I didn't fall in love with the drums at that point. They were just there and they were fun to bang on. And uh, I think that just sort of permeated my DNA a little bit and just started. But I got into it more seriously when I was about 12. Ah, so you started taking lessons or getting? Yeah, taking yeah. lessons. I moved to Toronto and that was big because everyone loved Rush. And if you love Rush, you love drums and Neil Peart. And so I was playing and drawing his drums and figuring out his lyrics. I was a total Rush guy. And that helps you grow pretty quick on the kit. And uh, yeah, cover bands, meet some chicks, and uh, <laughs> you keep going. You keep going. Is that true? The, the, the drummer always gets the girl? No. no, especially if you're listening to Rush. No girls. No girls. <laughs> no. no chicks. <laughs> nope. Anyways, how about you, Liam? Uh, yeah, Liam. It's actually a similar story. My, um, my uncle, my dad's brother, Walter was, was a drummer, and uh, in his late teens, early 20s, he grew up in Windsor, so he always used to go to Detroit to watch jazz bands. He really got into jazz and blues and R&B and funk and things, um, and uh, he would play all the time, and then when he wasn't touring or he would get a job for the winter or something, when the gigs weren't around, he would uh, leave his beautiful set of White Rogers um, in these 70s Rogers in our basement, which is, these are great drums, and I would have been, you know, similar age to Jeff, like five, six, around there, and I would get down and play away, and my, my older brother, who's eight years older than me, he played drums too and played in bands in high school, and so when his friends would come over to rehearse in our basement, I would hop on when he would go to the washroom or whatever and try to play a bit with the, with the guys, um, and that's how I got rolling, and... Uh, then when I was nine, I started taking snare drum lessons in this scary church basement. <laughs> Just a snare drum on a stand, wow. standing with um, Karen Tomlin. Um, this was in Ontario, um, in Kitchener, Ontario, uh, Karen Tomlin. She's a great teacher. Just did rudiments for a year, just on the snare drum. Wow. Wouldn't let me touch the kit, you know, that sort of thing. And all I ever wanted to do was rock out the whole time. And, <laughs> um, so that was, but that was great because you got, you, you know, there was a way to get your hands together and get the basics. Um, and then I would just go home and instead of practicing the things that she gave me, probably I would be playing along with, you know, Santana Records and Led Zeppelin too, you know, kind of that sort of thing. Um, and then, yeah, as, as I got into high school, sort of playing in bands with people, you meet, you meet good buddies that play guitar and you play Substitute by The Who. Substitutes for weeks because that's the only <laughs> tune you know. Amazing. Yeah. 
And that's it. And then one thing led to another, and I ended up out here in 97 in ah, BC. Okay. Nice. The year I started working here at CAP. Oh. Yeah. Well, I would have, I would have started at CAP in the jazz program in 98? Yeah. 98, 99. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Well, it's always nice to have a Cap U alumni yeah. <laughs> with us. Thanks. That's great. Pat, your your journey to the drums. The first thing I really remember that really got me excited. My dad uh, had brought home um, the Beatles, Sergeant Pepper, and I would have been five, and and I can remember that the song Lucy in the Sky. Right before it hits the chorus, the, the, the drums went doom, doom, doom. And it goes to the song. And I, I, I think for me, the drum thing was exciting, but I think the song was so exciting, like the, that record. And I think that's what was the most exciting part of all of that. And then around that time, my dad had a friend that used to come over once in a while, and he could play, uh, he could play brushes. My, my parents, they went and they bought this little snare drum for me one year. And um, this friend of my dad's, Wally, would come by, and I can remember the whole, my brother and sister and mom and dad, and we'd all be standing watching this guy going, shh, 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 shh. He knew how to play jazz on the snare drum. And then he'd go in my dad's office with him, and they'd talk about finances or something, you know. And then uh, about a year or two later, I was, uh, I started doing lessons with a guy, and I was living in West Vancouver at this time. And I did some lessons with a guy, and he had, he had all these drum sets in his basement. We'd do like half an hour on the pad and sit on these drums and play. And then uh, my dad bought me a secondhand kit. And then I just had that for a number of years. And it wasn't until about, uh, same thing, I was about 12. And, um, I, um, you know, I could, I would just, prior to that, I would just go in my room and just go hard. I didn't, I wasn't studying anything. I didn't really know. I would just go hard really fast because we were living in California, and then work up a sweat, and then go drink iced tea. And uh, <laughs> then, then, you know, about a year later, a year or so later when I was 12, the uh, bad company hit, and they had this big song on the radio called Can't Get Enough Your Love. I can't get enough for your love. And my friend had a set of drums that his brother had loaned him, and he'd go, check this out, man, that's what you do, and you put on the headphones and play along to this song, and I went, Oh, he goes, here, you want to try it? And I went, sure. And I put him on, and I knew exactly what to do because of these lessons from about five years before. But I, I never really was sitting at home, and I didn't have anyone around saying, work on this and listen to these records and everything. So at that day, it just, it, that's when it, it took off. And, and so now I was like, uh, and, and I had drums. And now I'm like, well, i got to get a stereo. So then I painted my dad's <laughs> house that summer, made a couple hundred bucks, got a stereo. And now I was like, you know, after school was the radio or the records and all that. So I did that all through um, until about grade 10 in high school. I had a really great music teacher up in Powell River and, and uh, he just, he realized this guy can't read, but he's got a, he's got a natural ability probably. But he, he just worked on that with me. And then, so by grade 12, I was like, okay, I'm gonna take guitar, stage band, this, I just took all music. And then that led, and I was same, same as these guys playing in little bands on the side and, and at college and, 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 um, Moved over to Vancouver, and, and, and in a short amount of time, I, uh, I made some pretty good connections with, um, I ended up connecting up with uh, a, a young gentleman that was coming up at the time named Brian Adams. Ah, yes, yeah. I knew he was so, in your and then, past, yeah. You know, like, like all of us, it's one thing leads to another, you know, people, it's, it's all networking for, at that point, you know, but that's how I got to it. Awesome. Well, I always think people who take up drums have to have very understanding parents. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or really big houses, right, for the noise. My dad worked shift work, and he would just go up to the top floor in our house, yeah. and I was in the basement, and he put in earplugs after working all night, and I would just wail, He'd just go. beat the crap out of it. He was like, well, at least I know where you are. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, they were so great. My parents, and all weekend, like, my friends would show up at the house Friday at about six o'clock and they would sleep over Friday night, Saturday night. We'd just play all, it was so great. great. Substitute. Yeah, all <laughs> for a week. Weekend. It yeah. takes supportive families. <laughs> One song. That's horrible, but it does take supportive families. I remember my stepfather built a room in the basement that was, uh, it might have been lead lined, but more likely sand. And it was raised and like it was fully soundproofed, room within a room type thing. 
and uh, we could play as long as we wanted. It smelled like a, just an awful locker room in there, no doubt. <laughs> Teenage boys for 15, 20 hours. I don't want to get Thanks into it. Thanks for conjuring that, Jeff. <laughs> well, but uh, so sweet of them and supportive. Some parents would be like, no, nah, I don't think so. You should try the flute or the clarinet or anything but the drums, but uh, very, very sweet people. Yeah. Well, for, I'm, I'm not a musician, but I always think the drummer is having the most fun. Like, it looks like the most fun. Like, I want to try it. You can make a sound right away. Yeah. You know, no matter yeah. what your level. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, first lesson with a kid, you can get them to, to do something, which is different than guitar. It's more yeah. Like, what? Great way to channel energy, too. Yeah. High energy. Of, I'm sure you all had high energy kids, right? <laughs> Still have high energy. What do you say, guys? Are you ready for the first annual Drummer Jeopardy? Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> Are you yeah, ready for yeah. the challenge? Yeah, I could do it. Welcome to Drummer Jeopardy, guys. Here are the categories. Backbeat, Blindfold, O Canada, and Drummers with Multiple Personalities. <laughs> wow. And here's our board. Look at that, guys. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So Liam, you get, I get to pick. Yeah. You get to pick. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna go uh, backbeat. Backbeat four. Uh, let's do 100. Backbeat for 100. So this rock drummer had his left arm amputated due to a car crash in 1984. Am I allowed to do it? Yeah. yeah. That's anybody, right? Yeah. yeah. I forgot his Rick name. Rick Allen of Def Leppard. Yes, yeah. you're right. Okay. Pat I Stewart. knew that. Pat Stewart's I, on the a board with that. 100 points. <laughs> okay. Wow, this is Oh, great. that's what you got to say. Who is Rick Allen, right? It's okay. You got it. Yeah. Oh, shit. That would have been so cool <laughs> if I'd done that. We'll get, get rolling. Right. Okay, you're up. Okay, and Pat, you're up. So you get to pick the next uh, question. Uh, next. A ca a ca any category, right? Any category and right. however, what, how what points you want to? I'm going to choose O Canada for 300. For 300, going for it. Okay. This famous Quebec-born drummer disappeared from his home in Aldergrove, BC, in November 2000, with his whereabouts still a mystery. Liam. Who is Claude Ronte? Yes, yeah. indeed. It was wow. Aldergrove, hey? Okay. Gosh, I didn't know that. I gave you 300. Liam, look at that. <laughs> Way to go. All right, and Liam, you get to pick again. Uh, backbeat for 200. Okay. Which famous left-handed rock drummer played righty in his band? Who is Ringo Starr? Who is Ringo Starr? Right. Yeah. Ah. Did you guys just, know that? You've been Jeff, up you didn't long. know that. You're a lefty. What's the problem here? I, I don't know. I think I'm stunned. <laughs> I'm stunned being here with these guys. I'm just stunned. Gosh, shoot. Look at him. Just shoot right up there. I'll it's go okay, Jeff. You'll get there. There's beat. questions that are just for you. I know. Backbeat uh, for 300. Okay. This drummer started the Mile High Polo Club, whose members included Hunter S. Thompson. Pat. Who is Stuart Copeland? Ah, oh, shoot. You didn't well, get it. You didn't get it this time, Pat. No, I didn't. That's oh. okay, though. Sometimes I've seen them lose it on TV. <laughs> Ginger Baker. Ginger Baker yeah. was, was into polo. Yes. He played, played polo. So that makes sense. If you'd watched that documentary, that's, I thought it was a fun fact. I forgot uh, that. Okay. Oh. So, oh. <laughs> Is it still me? We're on a roll. Still me? Still what? you then, Liam, yep. Uh, backbeat for 400. Okay. Which drummer played a beat this way? I think Jeff, I don't know who. That was close. It was really close. Yeah. Okay, Jeff, you go for it. Who is Charlie Watts? Charlie Watts, yes. Is that what you were gonna guess too, Leah? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And he'd say, no, it wasn't me, it was Jim. All right. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, Jim you're on say, the board. No, Ringo. Finally. <laughs> You know, Ian, when Ian played that, I, I had a phone call with uh, Ian to, and taped him on Zoom. Ian Froman, a, a drummer friend of mine who lives in New York, great jazz drummer, 
And he's like, this is going to be so easy. I said, really? I said, I don't think they're going to get it at all. So. <laughs> OK, Jeff. OK, uh, how about multiple personalities for 100? OK. This English drummer stopped playing to become the singer frontman of his group. Oh my God, you guys are right. I yeah, think it was Jeff, I think it was it Jeff was again. It was almost a flam, wasn't it? Was it a flam? <laughs> I think it was Jeff, Jeff it's, I think it's you again, yeah. Who is Phil Collins? Who is Phil Collins? Jeff pulls into the lead. <laughs> no, it's Jeff. No, just, you know, oh, Liam and, and Jeff are tied. Phil Collins, another short, swarthy, balding drummer. Like <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lefty. Okay, Jeff, yeah. you get to choose again. Here we go. How about O Canada for 100? This Hamilton-born drummer was also the main lyricist for his band. Although mainly thought of as a rock drummer, he incorporated <laughs> jazz wow. swing into his playing later in his career. Hamilton. Pat. Huh. Who is Neil Peart? Yes. 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 Oh, oh, good. Oh. Well done. I was getting, I, I, oh, I'm up to two. That's good. Jeff, I thought that was going to be your question. Interesting, because it is St. Catharines, and, not, and I went, Hamilton, oh no. He was born in Hamilton. But it was the jazz in the later career part that I think. Yeah. Yeah, he did that Buddy I, Rich record. Yeah. The late, great Neil Peart. Yeah. Yeah. You nailed it. Yeah. OK, Pat. Oh, wow, we haven't even cracked open blindfold. You get, you get to... Uh... I'm going to go low numbers with this guy sitting next to me. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's do blindfold for 200, please. Okay. Oh, damn you. That's easy, Liam. Who's John Bonham? And you get an extra 100 points if you can name the song. This is a whole lot of love. Great. So that's 200 points for, for Liam. Uh, and, you know, you're going to no. lead the summit. As who is the best drummer in the city? And it's, we are, I think we already know. <laughs> but it, and then extra 100 too. Christ, he got uh, it. Yeah. Well done, Liam. Yeah. Okay, well, so, the blind, so the blindfold guys is good because if you can name, you name the drummer for whatever points it is, but then it's an extra 100 if you can name the tune. So all blindfold right. is, you can get a lot of points in blindfold. Oh, all right. Okay. I'm gonna, we'll go blindfold for uh, 100. Okay. Oh, name the drummer. Uh, who is Dave Grohl? Yep. If anyone can name the song, the name escapes me of the you, song. You can, you oh, can get. Man. You can get the. Get, uh, you can get the the hundred points bonus. Oh, uh, what is it? <clears throat> The best for you? Is oh, I know. Hang on. Are you awake, Shoot. Pat? No, I know. <laughs> That's why you're looking at the sun moments ago. It's no time for a nap. Long way. It's something about long, long way home or something. Uh, okay, I so, so the song is "Territorial Pissings," ah. and uh, it's indeed Dave Grohl. Okay. Congrats, Liam. Well done, Liam. Good. Runaway hit with Liam Okay, McDonald. Liam, and you get to go again. I'll go blindfold 300. Awesome. Damn you. Liam, as sharp as a cat. Okay. Liam? Who is Max Roach Caravan? Absolutely, from oh. Money Jungle, yeah. one of the great jazz albums of yeah. all time, in my opinion. Duke Ellington, Charles Mingus, Max Roach. Yeah, stunning, stunning, you know it all. <laughs> he, he does. Dave Grohl, too, Max Roach. Love it. Uh, blindfold 400. Okay. I'm going to blindfold you in a second. <laughs>
Sandy Nelson, yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> I quit. I think I watched a clip about this band but recently. The song, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's just called Drum Dance. I okay. mean, it, it's an old YouTube clip. It's from 1965. <clears throat> so this is uh, Danny Cassavant sent me this. Oh, uh, yeah. that's a good one. Nice. He's such a fount of knowledge, and uh, you know, he he loves diving into music, obviously. So anyways, I thought it was a fun, a fun clip, uh, oh, archival you. clip for you guys. But well done. A real uh, pioneer in the uh, rock world for drummers, right? Sandy Nelson. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, anyway, cute, cute video. All right, Liam, you're on nice such one, a Liam. roll. Okay, let's finish the category. Blind for, for hold for 500. This is just a name that drummer. Is it who is Mark Juliana? No. Who is Han Benick? Han Benick, no. It's weird, it could be modern and it could be okay, I keep, know. Keep, kinda... keep listening. If so you, can, you guys, have, you guys have another guess. Okay. It's modern. Uh, who is Ian Pace? Nice. I was a it was a shot in the dark. Oh, is it? Yeah, Who's? sure was. Mm, no. One more guess. Pat, make a suggestion. Come on. Hey, stumped, stumped you. Wow. Um, who is Antonio oh, Sanchez? Right. <laughs> right, right. Oh, he was here, wasn't he? Yeah. He was here, yeah. A couple years, a few years back, so yeah. Good. That was so good. Okay, yeah. Wow. Okay. Not easy, though. It's not, it wasn't a song. Like, it was just him playing a solo. Oh, right, because he did the soundtrack for uh, Bert... Uh, Birdman. Birdman. Yeah. Birdman. That's right. yeah. And we Super did that cool. show. And we yeah. had him so we had him here in the last ja during jazz festival with his band. It was incredible. Yeah. You came to that show, right? Yeah. yeah it was here. lovely. Okay, so who's sorry, I've last track. E Liam still. I think it's still Liam. I'll go. We on. still got a chance. Let's go backbeat for five hundred. Okay. This jazz drummer died unexpectedly at the age of fifty one from a heart attack after routine gallbladder <laughs> surgery. Who went? It's so hard to. F Jeff? Was Go. it? No, it was Liam. Liam. Was it me? Go. Yeah. I didn't do a thing. Uh, who is Tony Williams? Tony Williams. Damn. Yes, ah. indeed. Wow. Just faster than me. That's all. <laughs> Did you know it was Tony Williams, Pat? He, I knew it was that. He died on my birthday. Really? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. So young. I, I didn't know he died that, that early. I was just reading that recently. Yeah. Like, that's just. That is so young. Yeah. 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 And such a great drummer. So and every, everything he did before he was even 30. It's just like, oh, oh my God. Everything yeah. he did before he was 20. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Played Jackie McLean, Miles, all that stuff. Okay, Crazy. Liam, you're still up. Um, let's do multiple personalities. I already forget what that, oh, right, right. right for 200. Drummers, okay. This American drummer was perhaps best known for their. Oh, gosh. Yeah. For their vocal prowess. Huh. Well, I, if it's who I'm thinking, I think it's equally his drumming prowess, too. But who is Levon Helm? No. Nope. Pat. Who is Don Brewer? No. Oh, Damn. Good guess, too. I know, I know. I, uh, Jeff? It should oh, be Jeff. Oh, so I know. Random. It's the guy from the Eagles. But I can't oh. remember his name. Oh. Boys of Summer. What's his name? It's not Don Henley. Who no. is Don Henley? It's not Don Henley? It's not Hold Don Henley. Oh, okay. This American drummer was, come on, guys. He was Karen ah. Carpenter. <laughs> Oh, right. right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, ah. Karen. She is amazing. She's a great singer. Yeah. yeah. Great drummer. Yeah. yeah. You can find these clips that Ludwig used to do these special, or she, they had their show. Where she goes around and plays all those drum kits? Everything. Yeah. yeah. They just sponsored her. Yeah. You know, Hell Blaine. <laughs> that wasn't that easy. There was, it could have been several people yeah. as, as oh, evidence. Oh, good one. So, that was anyway. a good question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Liam, right? Yeah. Let's do the same for uh, multiple personalities for, for three. 300. Okay, this American drummer reinvented himself as a singer, guitarist. Uh, that was Pat, right? Oh, no, it was Liam. Who's Dave Grohl? Dave Grohl, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go, 2,200. Yeah. 
There you go. Searing ahead. It's a good game. Why are we not doing better, Jeff? Damn it. <laughs> He's just too fast. I got magic frying. <laughs> I think it's the magic part. I'm taking that thing away from you in about five seconds. Uh, <laughs> let's do the same, uh, multiple personalities, 400. 400, okay. This Hall of Fame drummer has played in a variety of groups. <laughs> Who is Vinnie Caliuta? <laughs> yes, indeed, yeah. I just, I just saw him play with Herbie in Vancouver not that long ago. I don't think I can read very quickly. That's my problem. I don't think I've read anything in a long time. You gotta, you gotta do something about those Sally Jesse Raphael classes. <laughs> I think they work. They're very dirty. <laughs> Shit. Okay, All right, we'll do multiple personalities for five hundred. Five hundred. Okay, the biggie. Time. You guys can get back in there in in the in the hunt. This late night talk show host, oh. Liam. Who is Johnny Carson? Johnny Carson. <laughs> I just can't, I know 50% of them, I just can't get there as fast as you. Jesus. You need more coffee, Pat. He just reads like crazy. Uh, maybe that's it. Way more coffee. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do, um, oh, well, yeah, I guess we'll just do 200, oh, Canada. Oh, Canada. This Vancouver-born jazz drummer was awarded the Order of Canada in 2002. Yes, Pat? I just wanted to do that. No, <laughs> who is Terry Clark? Terry Clark, yes. Yay, Yay. well done. <laughs> I didn't realize he was born here. I didn't know that. Yeah, I would have known that. He was, that's, oh yeah, God, it's tricky, because I know he's known oh as a Toronto guy. You better watch out. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Pat. I was almost about to do it, sorry. I know, it's, it's, all right. it's a habit, you know, <laughs> backbeats, uh, which you've taken care of, by the way. I made notice. Okay, well, let's go with O Canada for 400. This Ottawa-born drummer moved to the U.S. in the early 80s, but continued to collaborate and perform with Canadian musicians, including one of Canada's most successful. Who is? That's one of your questions, I think. And I think that's the gentleman you spoke of earlier. Who is Ian Froman? Who is Ian, Ian Froman, yeah. So, and it's that's 100 random, bonus right? points if you know the uh, jazz fusion band that oh. he was part of. Oh, oh, uh, hang on. Oh, it's, his, it's him still, right? Oh, unless you can, uh, do you fly do you in know, if you know Do it? you know the band, Pat? The name of the band, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 well, you got the Metalwood. point. Ah, it's yeah. Metalwood, yeah. It. So yeah. an extra 100 points for Metalwood, yeah. That's some random <laughs> right there. <laughs> well done, friend. Oh, gosh. Oh, Whoa. I'm up there. This is so disheartening. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> You, last one. Okay, I've just, last I, one. So much levels of shock and love. At, <laughs> okay, <laughs> oh, Canada, everyone. This American-born drummer vocalist moved to Toronto in 1958 upon his high school graduation oh, yeah. and had a record deal with Roulette Records by 1959 with his Canadian <laughs> bandmates. So I think it was Liam. That one is who I originally said. This is who is Levon Helm. Who is Levon Helm? Yeah. Good one. Yay, wow. Yay. <laughs> Oh my God! Well Look at the done, point. guys. If only those were dollars. If only those were dollars. Jeff. <laughs> and who's the drummer? Who's the drummer? Who's the, who's the drummer of the theme song? Zigaboo. Zigaboo. Who's Zigaboo Modelist? Yeah. There you go. The I got it. Very cool. I got so, it. Five hundred. I was like third act. Oh, look at that light. Whoa. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> Where did I gotta get a photo? Take a bow, the Leo internet. McDonald. Take a bow, take a oh, bow. Oh yeah, the production, come on. Okay, so you have, you have a choice of, of prizes here because you're, okay. the, you're the winner. So uh, it's uh, fitting that the question that you won on was, this wheel's on fire, leave on helm and the story of the band. Mm -hmm. I've read it, known it. You've read it, so yeah. we also have a, a real must read here, Phil Collins, not dead yet. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dead yet. And we have, this is the call, the life and times of Dave Grohl. So your choice. I'll take the Dave Grohl one. Dave Grohl, yeah. you, you haven't read it. I, yeah. I haven't read it, my son read it, Jack. He loved it, he thought it was a great, he, he's a big fan. So congratulations, come yeah, come over. Thanks. <laughs> Yay, thank you.